Hi, welcome to the eighth edition of the Index Match Array series. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to sort duplicate values based on the summation of corresponding numbers. So here are the strings that we want to sort, and we want to sort them by the summation of sales in column C. We want to do this with one formula, and essentially what the formula is going to do is pull uniques, so it's going to find the unique values in here, it's going to figure out the corresponding values and sum those and then sort them by those corresponding values. Additionally, it's also going to ignore blanks as well. So this formula kind of does the thing, sort of if you've seen my uh, index match array video 6, it does a similar thing to that where it sorts names based on the ranks of their values, but this also can handle duplicate values, which the other video cannot. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here we have our original data, and here is where the formula is. So I'm going to just go ahead and take Johnson, who's sitting right here at 400. I'm going to add 1,000. As you can see, Johnson goes to the top. He's at 1,100 now because he has another value of 100 right here. So if I change this to negative 800, you'll see that Johnson goes down to 200 right here. And let's just, just for fun, add a name. I'm just going to add the name... Jeremy right there. You'll see that Jeremy was added to the bottom of the list at 80. If I add him again where Natalie is, um, Jeremy moves up to 180. So this video uh, works a lot like the index match array video I made in video 6, but it can handle duplicate values and the summation of the corresponding values. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, let me know if you need help. You can email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com. Um, otherwise, leave a comment. I think I'll leave the formula for this video in the description below, so you can use that as well. Okay, so if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I kind of like to start in the middle of the formula and then build towards the outside. So in these index match array formulas, I like to begin with what I call sort of the most integral function within the formula. And in this case, it's the sum if function. Sum if usually takes in three arguments. I'll show you what that looks like. If I type in sum if, here's my range argument. Our range argument is going to be salespeople. I'm going to go ahead and lock that by hitting F4. Our criteria argument, so the difference between a sum if array and a regular sum if is that rather than using one value for criteria, I'm actually going to use the entire range. And so what an array formula does is rather than returning one value, it returns an array of values. So that's where it gets the name. And then my last argument, or the sum range, is going to be in the C column. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And then I'm going to highlight it. And if I go to formulas and calculate now, this is the evaluation of that formula. So here you can see we have an array of numbers, and these are the sum totals for each one of these salespeople. So Dan has the summation of 250. So if we look at Dan, he has 100 right there. And then we look at him again, he has 150 right there. So that adds up to 250, so that makes sense. Um, so one of the problems we're going to have, though, is that we see 250 right there and 250 right there, so it's going to be difficult for us to distinguish between those two 250s. However, we're, we're going to be able to do that, and I'll show you how. So I'm going to go ahead and move this formula over, over to total sales. Um, and then what I'm going to do is use a match formula to find the placement. So I'm going to go equals match. My lookup value is going to be actually an array. So this is a match array formula. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. My lookup array is going to be that same exact range of cells. My match type is going to be 0. So I want it to tell me where these cells match up um, finding the first cell. So for instance, this Natalie, which will be in cell 5, will actually have a value of 4 because it'll do a match and it'll find the first Natalie right there. So if I highlight that and go calculate now, you'll see that we have our array of matches. So Dan it finds in cell 1, Jason it finds in cell 2, right here, Johnson in cell 3, Natalie in cell 4, and then Natalie again, also in cell 4. So we're actually going to use that 
to tell us um, uh, to compare our two arrays. So this array is going to uh, compare with our sum if array that we just made. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out if these are original. So as you see, if we have duplicates, so we have two fours right here and then two tens, those aren't original values. So what we want to do is write a formula that pulls out the originals. And we can actually do that by comparing it with a comparative operator, so a greater than or equal to our row. So we're going to just take this, go row, and then I'm going to go minus the row number of the cell before it. So let's see if I highlight that, go calculate now. It's going to give us an array of consecutive numbers, so 1 through 19. Um, and so this comparative operator is going to tell us whether it's original, because if it's less than one of these numbers, then we know that it was found prior. So I'm going to go Control-Z, and I'm actually going to go ahead and lock these cells by highlighting them and hit, hitting F4, and also uh, B2. And I'm going to throw that around there. And then if I highlight this whole thing, and you can hit F9, I have to go to Calculate now, it's going to give me a, a series of trues and falses. So as you can see, we have true, true, true here, and then a false there, which means that this Natalie is duplicated. And then a true and a false, which means Dan right here is duplicated here as well. We can't really do too much with trues and falses, but we can, dealing with arrays, do a lot with ones and zeros. So um, to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros, or ones and errors in this case, we can do a mathematical operation. So I'm going to do one over this, and that's going to give me Oh, excuse me, wrap parentheses around my match function. But if I highlight it, hit calculate now, it's going to be a, a series of ones or errors, which is a divided by zero error. So basically, if this, if any one of these items is duplicated, it's going to give me an error. And we're actually going to multiply this with our sum if array that we made earlier. So I'm actually going to just take this and copy it. And then I'm going to multiply it just like that. If I highlight this and go to Calculate Now, now it gives me an array of the summations of each one of these. And then if we have duplicates, it gives me this divided by zero error. So I'm actually going to null that out by using an if error. So an if error will actually take in an array and convert all of the errors to the specified value, which I placed right here, which is going to be null. Calculate Now, 250, 400, 200, 180, null, 200, 100, 180, 200 null. So essentially, these are the summations for all of the values that correspond with these salespersons. So Dan, which rep is represented by this 250, has the summation of sales of 250 within this range. So if we look at Dan, he has 100 right there. And at the corresponding sales cell in C9, he has another 150. So he has 250. OK. so. That's kind of the meat and guts of what this formula is going to do. The next thing we have to do is, because we are trying to sort this from the, the most profitable salesperson to the least profitable, we're going to have to use a function called large. And the reason I use the if error and convert those errors into nulls is because large actually will not accept uh, error values. So if I go large, and then my k is going to be something called a rows function. And go rows e3 through e3, and what that is is an incrementer. So if I make one of these cells permanent, this right here will return a 1, but if I drag it down, it'll actually return a 2 because it's saying how many rows are between the cells of d3 and d3? Well, 1. But if you uh, drag it down, it'll be it'll it'll say how many rows are between the cells d3 and d4, and that's 2. So I can close that off, hit Control shift enter because we are dealing with arrays. And it gives me 500. And you'll actually notice that we do have 1,000 here, but Johnson also has negative 800 here. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a 0, make it less confusing. So now we have um, 1,000 right there. So Johnson is our greatest salesman. OK, so what do we do from here? Well, the next step is to do a match formula. So I'm going to take that match. Our lookup value is created by this large function surrounding this array. And then we're going to just going to copy this array all the way to here. And we're going to look our lookup value through 
that lookup array. And our match type will be zero. So an exact match, not an approximate. Uh, control shift enter, and this is going to give us our row number. So if we go down, if we're looking at our rows, one, two, three, Johnson sits in the third row of that range, or the third cell down. Okay, so what would be next? We can use our index function, and we can just highlight that array, hit F4, use our match function to pull that row, close it off at the end, control shift enter, and then drag it down. Okay, so it looks like we're having an issue, and one of which is Holly is coming up twice. So one of the problems is with these match formulas is that it always pulls the first value. So because if we have two names with the same sales values that add up, this formula will always pull the same name because it's using the, the summation of the sales to figure out who to pick out. So we can actually do that by creating a little diversity within these names. And my favorite method of doing that is subtracting the row number. So I'm actually going to see if I can put that right here. I'm going to go uh, minus row, and I'm just going to highlight this range again. And then I'm going to divide that by 1,000. So that's just going to create slight differences in terms of things to look up. And I'm going to use that formula twice because we're changing both the lookup value and the array. So I have to, and I'm going to put it right here. Just go minus the row B3 through B21. Okay, drop this down. And then you can see that we have actually unique values. Okay, so one more thing I have to do is use an if error to get rid of those error messages. And remember, you hit Control Shift Enter whenever you enter an array function. And then I just double clicked on the corner and bring it down. And there you have a unique list of names ranked based on the summation of sales in column C. So the next thing I can do is use this sum if formula. The range and the sum range are already correct, so I'm just going to go in here and change the criteria to be a single criteria. I'm going to hit enter, drag that down. I'm going to do a, a little trick and go, you know, if cells E3 equals null, my value of true is null, but my value of false is the sum if formula. And drag that down. And I'm just going to do a little trick and format paint this. OK, so there you go. That is our list of uniques sorted by the number of sales made. So if I change Jack, who has 80 right here, and I'm just going to change the zero value to 800, you'll see that he goes right above Adam at 880. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please email me if you have any questions. My email again is xlsxgeek at gmail.com, and I'll be sure to walk you through them. Again, I'll post this formula in the description, and hopefully it works out for you. Thanks for watching.